Hello everyone, welcome to a quick video about the two box oil controller PCBs I make, AFC Lite and AFC Pro. AFC Lite's been out for a while but I haven't made a video about this so I wanted to include this in this video too and AFC Pro is the new PCB. Both of these are still relevant for box oil applications, it just depends on which features you want and how many lanes you want from your box oil and things like that and I will talk about both of these in this video. But before that I want to quickly mention what a box oil is if in, in case you're not familiar with what that is. Box Ordle is an automatic filament changer system, similar to how a Bamboo Lab AMS works. So there is an extruder motor under each spool that drives the filament from the spool to your 3D printer's extruder. And then uh, when you're doing a swap, it rewinds it and then uh, the, uh, the next spool's extruder motor pushes it to the 3D printer's extruder motor. So that's how a Box Ordle works. This is different than an Enrage Rabbit Project Carrot Feeder or an MMU system uh, in the sense that there is no selector cart or anything like that and each lane has its own individual extruder. Box Ordle also does things a little more differently than that though because there is a stepper motor, a NEMA 14 extruder motor, you know, the typical extruder motor we use on Voron 3D printers these days and a brush DC motor, an N20 motor under each uh, lane so the bro uh, the stepper motor drives the filament to your 3d printer's extruder and then rewinds it back as well and what the brush dc motor does is it spins the spool to uh, a forward assist so uh, when you're pulling filament uh, when there is tension on the filament a switch gets triggered and that way uh, the system knows that there is tension on the filament and it runs this motor in the forward assist mode to make sure there is no tangle and the spool stays in place, doesn't topple or anything like that. And when you're rewinding, what this motor does is it uh, rewinds the spool as well, so you, you get the filament around the spool as tightly as possible. So that's one thing that uh, Box Turtle does differently, and this is the thing that led to the design of the AFC Lite in the first place, because there weren't any 3D printer boards out there that supported these uh, brush DC motors because you need H bridge brush DC motor drivers and that's what led to the AFC light so if you if you're familiar with the box turtle you might have already heard of the AFC light PCB uh, this is the stock box turtle controller PCB and uh, it's also supplied with a bunch of kits including mine LDOs and form bots and it is also in the bomb so uh, what this board has is four uh, step stick slots for TMC2209 based step sticks. It has four brush DC motor drivers, these little square chips in here, and these uh, brush DC motor drivers allow you to drive that brush DC motor in both directions. This has enough switch connectors to uh, uh, connect everything you need to connect to this in a box turtle and a few spares, so it has 12 switch connectors. And it has four ARGB LED connectors here, so NeoPixels and things like that. You only need one in theory, but it just has a few extra, just in case you want more L RGB, because you know more RGB is faster, obviously. And then there is a fan connector here for a 5 volt electronics cooling fan. This board will run just fine without any sort of active cooling. You don't need to connect a fan here, so if you if the fan noise bothers you and this board is in a you know, room temperature-ish environment, this board will work just fine, you don't need the fan, but since the box or little bomb specs a fan, there is a fan connector here as well, so if you want to connect the fan to cool the electronics, you can connect that here. This board has a 5 volt 6 amp buck converter to power everything. 6 amps is pretty substantial, but I wanted to, this board to be just fine even in the worst case scenario, so if you have several motors stalling, if you have a fan connected, if you have a whole bunch of LEDs connected, whatever, 6 amps is substantial and uh, that should be way more than enough so that buck converter is built in here this board can communicate with your 3d printer you know raspberry pi or whatever running clipper uh, through usb or through CAN bus. CAN bus is the default option so you can connect the two CAN bus pins here and then there is a texas instruments uh, CAN transceiver built in right here and the other two pins are for the port power so 24 volt or 12 if you prefer and ground and uh, if you want to use USB that's also supported you still need to connect the power here but you can use the USB-C connector here for data communication and uh, the USB-C connector it won't draw much power from here at all because the Raspberry Pi can't handle it and because of that the board is designed to power uh, draw its power through the connector here. As for the microcontroller there's a Fairly large microcontroller here, and a fairly high-end, high-performance one, STM32H723. 
We don't really need its performance for this application, but we do need its pins. And as you can see, there are quite a few connectors on here, not to mention each each of these drivers taking several pins, separate drivers taking several pins, etc. You needed a big microcontroller for this to work, so this is an STM32 A723 microcontroller. So yeah, this board's been out for a while and there are many people using these, but I've also received requests from some people who want to build fancier box hurdles with more lanes or more advanced features. So this is the AFC Pro. As you can see, this is considerably larger, almost, not quite, but almost double the width. It is the same height though, and that is important because you need the height to be the same to fit in the box hurdle. This also supports USB and CAN communication, but as you can see, this has two CAN bus connectors. So what this lets you do is, uh, this lets you daisy chain multiple uh, boards. For example, if you have a AFC Pro and AFC Lite, and you are building a 12 lane box turtle, you can run a cable from here to here. And uh, yeah, daisy chaining uh, can make wiring multiple boards a lot easier. But for that to work, obviously you need to use CAN bus. USB doesn't support daisy chaining. Anyway, you can see this has eight step stick slots for a TMC2209 based uh, step sticks. And this also has eight brush DC motor connectors here. You'll notice that the drivers for these are a little different though. You can see that these are much bigger chips than the chips used on here. So uh, these drivers are a little fancier. You don't really need the extra features of these for a normal box turtle build, but if you want to build something fancier, again, this is the pro version of the board. These have a few extra features. If you're building a box turtle that's designed to drive, say, five kilogram spools, uh, you might want to use a higher voltage brush DC motor instead of using uh, one of these tiny uh, five volt, technically six volt uh, N20 motors, you might want to use a much bigger brush DC motor and you might want to use a different voltage for set brush DC motor. So these brush DC motors also support 12 and 24 volts VIN. So uh, you just move this fuse from here to here and here. Uh, you do that when the system is powered down, obviously, and you can uh, drive even more powerful motors that way. Again, not needed for a stock box turtle build. Stock box turtle build uses six volt uh, brush DC motors powered from five volts. If you have some applications in mind that might benefit from that, the board itself supports it. This still has four RGB NeoPixel connectors here, but you can see this has many more switch connectors, uh, 20 switch connectors up from 12, and that is enough for you to connect everything you'd need to connect to this board to build an eight lane box turtle build. There are also a few extra connectors here. This has two thermistor connectors, so if you have chamber thermistors or things like that that you want to monitor, you can connect them here. There's an I2C connector here. You can use this for, as an example, my Nevermore sensors, which have BME280 and SCP40 sensors on them. You can use that to monitor chamber temperature, pressure, humidity, and walk inside whatever chamber you put the sensor in. For example, if you're building an enclosed box turtle and if you want to monitor that sort of stuff, you can connect that here and then uh, yeah, you can see that all that stuff on your main sale uh, user interface. There's a fan connector here as well, just like the AFC Lite, but in this case, it is also voltage selectable. You can select five, 12 or 24 volts and it is also speed controlled. And uh, yeah, because this has 12 volts and brush DC motors also support 12 volts, there is a 12 volt buck converter built onto this board as well. So this has two buck converters, uh, five and 12 volts and you are supposed to power this with 24 volts. In this case, 12 isn't supported, but if you're building a, if you're using this board, you probably have a 3D printer that's using 24 volts anyway. There is also a heater connector here. This is not meant for you know giant heaters, but anything that draws a hot end level of power, you can connect that here and control that using this, uh, this MOSFET here through this connector. Uh, you can use this for uh, you know, filament dryer heaters, for example, but uh, also you, if you have white LEDs in your chamber, as an example, the dumb kind without any sort of active control, and you want to dim that, you can again connect that here and use this to dim that LED. So this functions just like any other heater port on any other 3D printer controller board. And uh, yeah, that is built into this PCB as well. And uh, this board PCB also uses an STM32H723MCU but it's it's a bigger cousin of the one that's used on the AFC light. So this is a bigger chip and we're literally using all but one pin on this MCU because yeah, again, you need a big uh, MCU for these boards to work. So the same sort of MCU, just this bigger variant and uh, the CAN bus stuff is also done 
through the same TI can transceiver here. So uh, yeah, both of these boards are out. As I said, the AFC Lite's been out for a while. AFC Pro I released a few weeks ago. If you're interested in the AFC Lite and AFC Pro, you can find more information about these on their GitHub repositories, which is linked in the description below. And on, on the GitHub repositories for these PCBs, you can also find their manuals. As you can see, these are pretty detailed uh, PDF manuals, as I tend to do for all of my PCBs. So, yeah, you can find the manuals on the GitHub repositories, which are linked in the description below. And on the GitHub repositories, you can find purchase links for these as well. And uh, obviously, I sell these directly myself as well. So you can find links to the AFC Lite and AFC Pro uh, store pages in the description below. And if you're interested in the BME280 SCP40 sensor PCB I mentioned, that's also available on my store, linked in the description below. Also an open source project available on GitHub as well. If you want more information about the Box Turtle project, that's also linked in the description below, their GitHub repository, where you can find a ton of information about this. And I'll also link the documentation for the Box Turtle project in the description below as well. They did an amazing job with the documentation for this project, so this is the written part of the manual. And you can also look at the assembly manual as well. These are like, they, they really did a great job with this. So everything you need to do to build a Box Turtle, it's as well documented as they, it could possibly be. So. I'll link their uh, documentation in the description below as well. And if you're interested in purchasing a box turtle kit, I also have them available on my store. And uh, I have custom lane options as well, two, three, four, five, six, and eight. And five, six, and eight come with AFC Pro, two, three, four come with AFC Lite. I'll link all of these in the description below. But uh, that's it for this video. I hope you found this project interesting. If you did, please leave a like down below. And thanks for watching.